We will now work through our lecture examples of our financial instruments. You will identify on the right hand side of our screen that I will try to include my theory and my principles as per our notes or our revision pages. Now the reason why I do this is I want to indicate to you where did we cover those principles in our lecture. Number one and number two, the importance of the fact that you need to study the principles. Now guys, important, when we work through an example or a question and there is a principle or paragraph covered in that example or question, you need to add this to your revision page or your notes. Unfortunately, it is impossible for me to include 100% all of the principles and all of the paragraphs in our notes. Guys, you know that the standards are very extensive and there is a lot of information. And that is why it is important that you work through examples and questions properly and then add additional information on your revision pages. Now let's work through example one. Redeemable preference shares. Company A issued preference shares of 1 million that are redeemable in 20.18. The annual preference dividend of 120,000 Rand is cumulative. All unpaid preference dividends are accumulated for future declarations or until the redemption in 20.18. Now, without looking at the solution, you will remember we identify that our preference shares will have a capital portion as well as a dividend portion. And this is our cash flow. Therefore, we need to identify if our preference shares is either a financial liability or equity. Remember, and this can be both, therefore, compound financial instruments. Now, when you look at our black block at the bottom of the right-hand side of our screen, this is the important characteristics that you need to know. Now, based on the information, we have identified that this is redeemable and number two, cumulative. Now, what does it mean if they indicate to us it is cumulative? Remember, we cannot declare dividends to our ordinary shareholders if we have not yet declared dividends to our preference shareholders. And guys, if we have not yet declared dividends to our preference shareholders, this will be an obligation for Entity A to recognize Okay, so guys, you will have to write these things. Now, if this is an obligation and you look at our diagram on the right-hand side of your screen, remember question number one, is there a contractual obligation to deliver cash or a financial asset? Yes, this will be a financial liability. Remember, company A, does not have an unconditional right to avoid paying the preference dividends and the share capital. Therefore, this will be a financial liability in the records of company A. Guys, important, remember we did briefly discuss the critical feature test. Remember, we need to look at our substance over legal form I know that you are not able to read this small sentence here at the bottom, but this is in your notes and we have discussed them. Now, let's have a look at example two. Company A issued non-redeemable preference share capital of 1 million. The annual preference dividend of 120,000 is cumulative and payable at full discretion of company A. Extremely important. What does this mean? Can they avoid the payment 
if the dividends and capital portion gas is payable at full discretion of company A. Yes, they can avoid paying this. Therefore, if immediately, if we think about this, they can avoid payment. You know that this will be equity. Therefore, guys, ensure that you understand this. There's one thing that I want you to please add to your revision pages. And this will be the last paragraph. They indicate to us, therefore, they can contract cannot be classified as a financial liability. Yes. Also, when preference dividends on non-redeemable preference shares, whether cumulative or non-cumulative, or at the discretion of the issuer, the shares should be classified as equity. Okay, so guys, we did think about this, the fact that they can avoid payment, it is equity, but if you want to add this to your revision page or to your notes to study, you are more than welcome to do this. Example three, contingent settlement provisions. Now, immediately, when you look at the word contingent, you need to know that we are referring to an uncertain future event. They indicate to us that Construct Limited issues the benches that are convertible into ordinary shares after three years. If the revenue of Construct Limited increase by more than 8% per annum, if the increase in revenue is less than 8% per annum, Construct Limited will redeem the debentures in cash. Now, what they're indicating to us is that there is two options. Option number one, if our revenue increase is less than the 8%, that they will redeem the debentures in cash. Option number two, if our revenue increase exceeds the 8%, they will convert the debentures into shares. Now, when you think about our diagram, our first question that we had, is there a contractual obligation to pay cash or a financial asset? If your answer is yes, we know that this is a financial liability. If our answer is no, we need to ask, Will the entity issue its own shares? If our answer is yes, you need to look at the variable and fixed number. Now the problem with contingent settlement provisions is that this is beyond the control of both the issuer and the holder. Therefore, we need to ask the question, does the issuer have an unconditional right to avoid delivering cash or a financial asset? No. Therefore, guys, this will be a financial liability in the records of construct.